Hey everyone, I want to take shape of what God is singling out in my or our lives right now. And no one would ever say that COVID is fun. Um, when you look at your life right now, you kind of want to take a deep breath and get your bearings because this is uh, similar like being at the beach when there's big waves. Uh, COVID kind of comes in waves. First wave really was a lot of fear. Second wave and a, uh, was a lot of sadness. People just very sad of all the loss and the things that are going on. Uh, upset of the changes, but real sadness. The third one was uh, a great amount of uh, hurt and pain because there's so many people experiencing loss, uh, things that maybe your life was looking a certain way or going a certain way. And I don't think we can devalue what we're talking about here because that pain isn't gone yet. And uh, so many people are still dealing with that third kind of wave. It, it's similar to grief when somebody dies, what most people are going through. I think that in many ways, it's like your body with a bad event, it experiences shock. And now the shock is wearing off. And in all the papers, uh, and many people in the church are even phoning me and telling me my teenager works at a store, and now there's just anger everywhere, screaming, shouting, yelling. And I know that not everybody maybe is, is aware of it, but uh, as a pastor, you start hearing this trickle back on a personal level, and then you see for sure in the papers now they're saying uh, this. And on the Christian radio, they were talking how in America, the big, uh, I think it was Focus on the Family, was saying there's an explosion across the whole country of anger. They've never seen anything like it. Uh, and you're seeing this talked about on our radio station here in London, the Christian radio station. So it's we're being put through something. And as we share this, it's important to say, catch your bearings and get some grace from the Lord. And we know that we are to do all those types of things, but what is it that trumps uh, the things of the world right now? And it's the things of the spirit that God has gone before us. And he knew that this is all gonna take place. So in a very important way, you don't wanna make sure, or you wanna make sure that you're trying to de dig down deep with the Lord and don't be shallow right now. There's some things that are going on in your life and if there's a shallow response, you're not gonna fix it. I think that a lot of people have a hope in something and that hope gets dashed. But then when that hope gets dashed, a hook from the enemy counteracts the hope of God. So I wanna look at that. There's two ways that your life will go right now. Hope from God will fix it. A hook from the enemy will not help. In many ways, the enemy kind of brings a hook and says, well, your salvation lies here or your salvation lies there. You, 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 you know, you have, for something good to take effect, you need to do this. Peter says, we are not unaware of the devil's schemes. Now, one of the things that I can guide uh, my own heart through, and as I listened uh, in front of the Lord, I said this this morning in the message that I spoke about, is that you do not want to lose your voice right now. The Lord has given many people a voice and COVID has shaken their faith. Now, sometimes we look and we say, okay, the Bible verse that says what can be shaken will be shaken, but then there are things that cannot be shaken. But a little thing that is a reminder is that don't let the devil steal your voice or sil silence is maybe not a good word because it won't be silenced and then be talked again. The voice, if you shed your voice in the Lord right now, probably you'll, you won't get it back. Um, it, there won't be a better day where, the, where your voice will come through again. The voice that God gives you. And you see that in the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The voice that God has given you is to be used now. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego faced a situation where there was a plane in Persia and Babylon area, which is Iran and Iraq generally now, and there was a giant idol erected by King Nebuchadnezzar. He wanted, he was kind of tricked because the, the people that were adversaries of the Jewish people knew that the Jewish people wouldn't bow down to this idol, so they got the king, they manipulated him to do it, to put it up and make everybody worship. They knew it would singular, singularly affect the Jewish people. So they constructed a set of laws that they knew would work against their enemies. 
And, you know, you look at the world right now, there's a lot of laws being constructed and many of us feel, oh, well, like we get very isolated by all these things. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, laws that affected them. Now, in their instance, it was specifically targeted at them. And a lot of people are seeing a lot of things created in their life where it's very sharp, the effect, and it's very penetrating what's happening. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had a choice. Either you bow down and betray God or speak up and say, hey, king, we're for you, we're not against you. There was a battle that they faced, and in their battle, they chose to use their voice and say the things they needed to say, not in a sharp way against the king, but when they were singled out, they still said what God had for them to say, and they said it in a way that was Christ-like. They said it in a kind way. They said it, we're for you, king, but we can't do this. The king, it says, then was his anger. He then became enraged. That is a difference that is rage versus anger, and a sign of it was he heated the furnace seven times hotter. So that is quite a rage, and to the point that it killed the guards that threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the furnace. When they then were thrown into the furnace, they, God then spoke, so to speak, and Jesus was in there, and the Nebuchadnezzar, uh, noticed, it's not hard to miss, a fourth person who looks like the Son of God called to them and they came out without a scratch, burn, even the smell of smoke on them. They were listening to God. I'm sure they knew in their heart that God was not wanting them to, to say the wrong thing. The wrong thing would have been say, sure, we'll save our lives and we'll do this. Now, what I want to just say is, there is a pattern here that I want to pick up. It's very subtle, but just notice it. They could have said the wrong thing and gotten kind of what they probably wanted was to save their life. So their words dictated their outcome. But instead, they trusted God knew, hey, we're not for you. Uh, sorry, we're, we're not for you, king. We're against you. That, that wasn't the truth. What they were saying is, king, we are for you. We're not against you but our words are gonna take shape here and probably cause us to get killed, but we believe God's gonna rescue us. So they had a sense of faith, but they still spoke up. And the point is, if they would have thought to themselves, we'll just say, yeah, we'll bow, and we don't really mean it, they wouldn't have used their voice. God had given them a voice. You don't wanna surrender your voice right now. God will speak through you, your voice right now, not when it's shallow, but when it's strong and mighty for the Lord. I just know in my heart that there's many, many people that now is a time that so many people turn away. There's a Bible verse that says something interesting. And this is how you can measure, I, all of us, and I'm not saying any of us are perfect, but the Bible says, when these tough times or end times come, the love of many will grow cold. So we want to make sure our love is not growing cold. It is an exceptional thing to live in a day like today, but the way in which you will mark whether God is with you or not is by seeing not if your gift moves or not if you have an ability, but how that love that is in you, if that's what you're doing, whatever you're doing in love. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the king was against them, and they still spoke in love. We are in a day where everybody is against everybody. People are mad. People are getting evil almost. There's evil amongst us. And our choice right now will be to respond in kind or to respond in love. I choose love. If we offend people, we need to love. If we have a heart for people, it will be shown. And we will be better uh, instituted into our future when we don't lose our voice, but when we activate our voice and make sure it's in love. How are you using your voice? How, are you shedding the hope that God has given to you? Are you saying, I'm gonna lose my voice and not use it right now? So the key is don't lose it right now, use it. A lot of people are losing it in more ways than one, but when you lose it, when you go into, a, you know, when you're fixed on the Lord and your hope is in him, and you're willing to not be shallow and inviting danger to keep your voice, so to speak. The thing is, is that if your voice is being given in love, whatever happens is gonna happen, but God is gonna be with you. God is gonna silence the enemy's voice 
and God will rise up and unite with you. So remember that. The Bible says every weapon formed against you will not prosper. And if you are active and you're not using, if you're active in your love, uh, whatever goes on, if you're listening to God, if you're walking in love right now, if in your heart you're saying, God, I surrender my predisposition to this or that, we're all going to be changed by this thing. But you can activate in your heart a fellowship with the Holy Spirit, and a fellowship with the Holy Spirit will be singularly marked by love. I want to say this, and I want to say it very clearly. The Bible says, if I have the gift of prophecy, and I can see all mysteries, if I can speak in the tongue of men and angels, but have not love, I count for nothing, and I am a clanging gong. We are in a time of increased anger, and if your voice is silenced, it won't be silenced. Also, if you don't speak, you'll just, whatever voice God has given me, I'll know it's God if it's, if I see it in love. And that's the, that is the kicker scripture of all scriptures to the voice and use of the gifts that God has given us. And at this time, then you'll know if that voice that God has given you, if that work of God in your life is carried out in love, then it will accomplish the purposes to which God has called you. So the Bible says, if my word, which proceeds from my mouth, uh, or sorry, when my word, which proceeds from my mouth, as it goes forth, it will accomplish the goals for which I have sent it. So God has to speak it. God has to send it. But when God speaks it and sends it, the critical thing as we know from 1 Corinthians, is that it has to be given in love. So your voice, everything we're doing right now, it won't change the world. See, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't just stand up. And with this, I, this is my final point. They didn't just stand up for the faith. <clears throat> I think it's important to say this because I see many people saying we have to stand up for our faith. We have to tell the world about our faith and show it. And so people are picking strange, almost uh, plumb lines to show their faith. Uh, the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh or blood, but against principalities and powers. First of all, if you're going to take a stand, don't take a stand and direct it at people. That's, that's you know, anger is, you know, I don't wrestle against a person. I wrestle against not flesh and blood. And that's important for me to see. And it's interesting, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, it's, you see this, they had amazing love. They had no hate for Nebuchadnezzar at all. They just stood there. And I, I, as I say that, you know, it's so easy to enter into the day and in defense of yourself or whatever. But what you also see is God makes something of you. And that's amazing. God is the one who makes it. God is the one who makes us. God is the one who you know, makes friends for us in tough times when we don't have abilities to do things on our own. And we can stand in the Lord, not in the flesh right now, and then not lose our voice. Now, when we lose our voice, that often is an important thing to remember. Don't lose your voice. God has given you a voice. It's come down for you from heaven. And you want to accept everything that God has for you. So at the beginning, many of us in our lives, we accept what God has for us. We want to accept what God has in store for us. We want to unite with the purposes of God. But then at a time like this, it's not about just uniting, it's about keeping. We want to keep our voice right now. We want to keep our voice. And this is the biblical model, is that you don't want your voice to be keep hidden right now. That's the thing. So the Bible says, God, when God uh, puts a city on a hill, it can't be hidden. When he puts a light in your heart, you can't put a bowl over it to hide it. So right now, many people are like, I'll put a bowl over my light and hide it. Uh, the voice will come back later. I'm not sure it will. That's what people are thinking. We have to use it. If God's given it to you, you can't hide it right now. A lot of people are thinking, okay, God's given me a voice. I don't want to use it, so to speak, a gift, an ability. I'm going to not use something in love. It'll come back later. And I don't know. All I know is the Bible says you can't put a light under a bowl and hide it. So for me, I can't conform to unbiblical thinking in my mind. In my heart, I have to show my voice. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, they had a sense of what would happen, that the purposes of God were to, were to be, so to be, to speak, and not to just, to, to just stay silent. They couldn't stay silent. They had to, 
they couldn't stay still. They had to kind of sing a song of praise to the Lord and say, hey, we're for you, King. We're not against you. So how do you do that? You do that in love. That's what the Bible says. Whatever God has brought to me, I'll know it's God if I do it in love. And I can sense in my heart that really is the crux. I uh, studied that verse so carefully in Corinthians. If you have the gift of prophecy, if you have the gift of tongues and you don't use it right, if you have the faith to move a mountain, but don't use it in love, you won't, it's, I guess what I would say is you also probably won't go the distance. So to go the distance, to use the gifts, you don't want to shed the possibilities of what God has for you. You want to keep your voice. You want to share what God has said for you to share, but you can only do it in love. You can't adopt the spirit of the day. The grace of God, it, it will stay in us. Remember that whatever you do, the grace of God, if God's got you doing it, that will stay in you while you're doing it. Therefore, we have to put off all bitterness, bitterness, all envy, all striving, all strife, all malice, all rage. That's literally what the Bible says. So if we enter or we adopt that stuff for a time, our voice will become a shout instead of a clearly spoken word. And what the Bible says is what the enemy meant for evil, God's going to turn it around and use it for good for you. I believe that for your life, that what the enemy has meant for evil, God's going to turn around and use it for you. The point is every single person right now, and I feel this in my heart from the Lord, every single person needs to remember that every single other person right now is under an attack from the enemy. Everything we do, we need to remember whatever moves through you, whatever moves through us, whatever we witness by the Lord, we have to remember if God is doing a new thing in us, we also need to remember that that new thing, we should be reminded that this is an attack clearly against all, not against one. The purposes of God are not to smoke everybody right now. The purposes of God are for the church to unite in our hearts. That is what God in the Bible is saying. If you're listening to the word of God, you cannot get around that. Everything we're gonna do is for us. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are for the common good. And right now, what you want to make sure is, I'm not just gonna declare my own way right now. I want my, on my own will and I'll use my voice or whatever. No, use your voice as God has given it to you or it could be taken from you. Don't hide your light on a hill or on a city, it can't be hidden. If God's moving in you, it'll be great, and it'll be l absolutely in love. That's not only the witness of the word, it's the witness of the Holy Spirit. God wants to keep you. God wants to be enthroned in our praises. God wants to sit enthroned in our hearts and our lives in every area of our life. No one's perfect right now. Have amazing grace with everybody. Remember, everyone, every single one of you and us is under an attack. In this world, the, Jesus said, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Many people had a life view, perhaps, that if you're a Christian, you'll never have trouble in the world because you'll be blessed. That's not what Jesus said, and it's easy to accept Jesus' words. It's not so easy to live it. Take heart today, Jesus said, he's overcome the world and he is with you. And some people are like, well, if he was with me, he'd stop this. Well, he didn't stop it for, jo uh, for Jonah. Jonah uh, was a guy who had a voice. He had a voice, a prophetic gift that was given to him by God. He was called to go to Nineveh, which was the enemy of Israel in a wicked city. When the call came, Jonah took the voice that God gave him and he ran for the hills. He went the opposite direction. God told him to go to the right. He took off and went to the left. He said, go to Nineveh. He took off the opposite way was to go to Spain. And that's where he got on a boat to go to Spain. He was hid from the purposes of God. I want to just tell you right now, you really can't shake the purposes of God. They will shake you uh, or you'll kind of, until you come to the place where you, you can't get clean of them because they are clean. Always remember this. God's purposes are clean, the Bible actually says. So remember, you can never get clean of the clean purposes of God. You can't clear out as Jonah found out. All you can do is you're not ever going to do good 
when you're getting to the place where you don't want God to move in a good way through you. So if God gives you a voice like he did with, that did with Jonah, what will happen is you'll just either get dead or you'll, you'll get uh, delayed or, or you'll have to make a decision. And, uh, you know, the enemy will just look and then he'll pounce. And you just are, know that God is determined for you. God, God will send a swell like he sent to Jonah. Don't get on the boat because the swell, the swell will be coming. And God's not sending a swell against you. He's sending a swell for you. And that swell, he'll just put a purpose in your life because he wants to fix it for your heart. A lot of people in your heart, it's the heart that is hurt and out of the overflow of the heart. Not only does the mouth speak, but if we listen to the scripture, what the Bible tells us, that that thing, it will, the things in your heart are what the issues of life will play out. So remember, one of the key things, the Bible says, of the three things that remain are faith, hope, and love. In the time of any crisis in the word of God, three things that God wants to remain are faith, hope, and love. Those are given to you to abide in enormous measure. For all of us, we all have to do it. We all have to remember that man is not our enemy. We all have to hope. We, uh, and remember, if your hope is gone, your, your head, Jesus isn't the head, right? Something else is the head. So always remember, and you say, where do you get that, Pastor Paul? Put on the helmet of salvation, which is hope. And when you put the helmet on that is hope, then Jesus is going to correct you and he will become the head again. Right now, you're not the head. You're not the head of anything. Jesus is. And if you don't have Jesus as the head, then you're not going to be able to adjust to what is going on outside of you. Only Jesus, the hel helmet of salvation, which is hope. Hope remains and we've got to have it. You've got to have hope. If you lose hope right now, that's the critical thing. The enemy's taking hope. The enemy is also then, once he takes your hope, it will become very clear because then you will lose your love. Hope and love go together and faith. So those things will abide and that's what's so critical. The city on a hill cannot be hidden. Your love cannot be hidden. What does that mean? Hear me very clearly and I'm gonna end with this. If you're doing God's will, it's impossible for love not to be there. Whatever I do, whatever takes place, if love is not there, then whatever is being sorted out, it's impossible to do what that what you cannot hide it. If, if it's God, through you will be love. If it's, you cannot light a, a, a candle and hide it under a bowl. And it's clear, if you don't have love, then it cannot be God. It's not the same thing. It's not what God has. No matter how entitled the world is, and what we're seeing is the whole world is falling apart and it's anger and it's faithlessness and it's lawlessness and there's no hope. And if you and I hold on in the promises of God, God not only will sort it out, God will work it out, but God will see you through. Whatever we do, we do it in love, no matter what gift I have, if I have an offense against a brother, I go, I make it better. Whatever goes on, that's not, you see, don't let the very thing that is happening in the world come into your heart today. Guard your heart in Christ Jesus. In Jesus name, don't accept the spirit of the age into our heart because our, it will get in the way, yes, but it'll point you in a way you cannot hide a city on a, hill. In Jesus' name, be blessed today and show the love of God in the, and use the voice that God is given. Let God speak through you and show his love today in mercy. In Christ's name, amen.